Son of a... Howdy folks, we are back with another video, and as promised, we've got a full Michael Myers Halloween Kills costume, or I hope so anyway. <laughs> Looks like USPS, back up to their old tricks again. Thankfully there's only clothes in here, so hopefully there's no problems. I've got the coveralls and the undershirt in the box here, weathered up by my man Josh Ludman at Beyond Disgusting Studios. Uh, before we open the box, I'll go over a couple of the other costume pieces here. So these are the same Dexters that have pretty much been in every video that I think I've done, uh, anything cosplay related. They're not screen accurate to the film Halloween Kills, but when the coveralls ride down, they get to about this area here, and from there down, I mean, it's the differences are almost non-notable. I mean, unless you're really scrutinizing with a magnifying glass, but uh, these have... Uh, done the deal for me pretty much every costume I've ever had and until I have a reason I don't see a need to change it up and obviously this guy is no stranger this is the Halloween Kills uh, Trick or Treat Studios mask completely rehauled by Pure Evil Masks we covered this mask in the unboxing video and since then after much deliberation I've decided to add some uh, dark mesh behind those eyes not screen accurate to the movie I thought about it I kind of went back and forth and I pretty much came to the conclusion that my fat noggin <laughs> really isn't right for these average size masks. The eyes set way too close to the eye holes here. And during the screen test we did for the video where I try the mask on, it didn't really seem to matter what kind of lighting we had or how far away from the lens I was. I could not get to a point where those eyes were darkened out enough uh, to make me happy. My personal philosophy, I, I don't like it when you see Michael Myers' eyes. I like them to be dark like 98% of the time. I think it's okay to see them once in a great while when it makes sense and it actually means something. But when Michael's just kind of standing about or moving around doing different things, when you can see the eyes, I don't know, it kind of it kind of takes away a little bit of the mystique for me. So it's just a personal preference. I decided to go ahead and throw the mesh in there. And later when we get suited up, Hopefully, we're going to have better results this time. Uh, we've got a selection of knives here. This is the 78 Lamson replica. This is thought for years to be the knife from the original Halloween film. This was made by Tim Miller from Dirt Nap FX. The one in the middle, this is um, the Case 10212 replica, which is the knife that's now been identified and confirmed as the proper knife from 78 Halloween film. This was made by James Carter. And our third knife, is the one from the 2018 film and also Halloween Kills. This is the J.A. Hankles International Chef Knife. Uh, eight inches long, I think. And this is not a replica. This is a real ass knife. Very sharp. I mean, like seriously. <laughs> this isn't something you want to be walking around at a convention with. But for a Halloween Kills costume or a 2018 Halloween costume, you're in really good shape. It's great for photo shoots, video, display, now in Halloween Kills, Michael uses not only this knife, but one that I think, last I heard, has still not been identified. But it looks an awful lot like the Case 10212, kind of a shorter version of it. The handle's really similar, the way the blade is shaped is really similar. So I'm thinking, what the hell, my cosplay videos and shots, I will probably alternate between these two. Found that on uh, Amazon, by the way. Don't know if they're still there, because Michael Myers costume pieces, especially in the new trilogy, have uh, pretty well been gobbled up and we'll touch on that a little more as we go along here so ready to cut this bad boy open and check out the coveralls and the undershirt again this is from Josh Ludman Beyond Disgusting Studios I've worked with the guy for years he's always been a total gentleman does really good work and I've seen some pictures of these I'm really anxious to see it in person Hopefully USPS didn't uh, destroy anything here. Beyond what would be considered weathering. Look at this. Okay. Start with the undershirt. And this has been touched a little bit. Nothing too crazy, but uh, it's been hit with uh, a little bit of blood little bit of weathering 
So this is not a Goto Navy Heather. Those are all sold out of my size. I could not find one no matter where I looked. And I'm like, really? I'm like even the freaking t-shirt has been gobbled up. So I found this on curbside. I believe that was the website. Yeah. And this is listed as a Navy Heather plain t-shirt. And I was able to find it in my size, which is 2X. All right, let's check out these coveralls. Oof. Feels crusty. We got some nastiness here. Exactly what I asked for. And the coveralls are the same as they were in the 2018 film. These are Workrite Ultra Soft Charcoal Colored Coveralls. And I didn't know it until recently, but apparently getting a hold of a pair is like finding gold. I didn't realize that they've been bought up pretty much everywhere on the market and you can't get them anymore. I was fortunate enough to pick these up probably within a week after they were first identified when the 2018 movie was in production. Ordered them from an outfit called Monroe Safety Apparel and this was February 5th, 2018 for $68.95 and apparently I was one of the lucky ones. I got in there quick before all my fellow cosplayers and some asshole scalpers snatched them all up and are now selling them on eBay for hundreds of dollars a pop. Yeah, no thanks. I will definitely be holding onto these. They turned out exactly the way I was hoping for. Got some really good blood work here. Good bullet holes. A lot of crustiness from dried blood. And this side especially is really nasty. Matches the uh, weathering and fire damage on the left side of the mask perfectly. So, Josh Ludman knocks it out of the park once again. Very kick-ass job, my friend. Definitely appreciate your talent. Oh, and I almost forgot. I meant to show you guys this when I was talking about the dark mesh on the mask. For those of you who are interested in doing this, if you have any kind of a mask that you want to add some dark mesh to, I picked this up at Joann's, actually at the recommendation of Josh Ludman. This is standard speaker fabric, this is all it is. And if they have different ones, Asked to see them all and pick the one that kind of has the lowest, lightest density. <laughs> pick one that you can actually put over your eyes and see out of because they have some that, I mean, just you'd be walking around like a blind man. But this stuff here is the fabric that I used and I used the Gorilla Glue Gel to uh, stick it to the inside of the mask here. Josh actually has a video about this uh, that I followed. I will link that in the description. It's not a hard process to do. It's a little touchy for a guy like me. <laughs> a little bit of my OCD got triggered and I have really big hands. So trying to work inside the mask here, yeah. Got a little annoying, but we got it done. I think it turned out well enough to where I'll get the effect that I'm looking for. So, and once again, Pure Evil Masks did the rehaul for the Halloween Kills mask, and Mr. Josh Ludman from Beyond Disgusting Studios handled all the weathering for the clothes here. Highly recommend both guys. Very cool to deal with. Well, it looked like there's been enough talk. It's time for the main event.